All right, how's it going, beautiful people? All the beautiful people out there of Instagram, welcome. I hope everybody's doing great. This is Jose Trujillo. We're gonna do a little painting. I have a little canvas right here, okay? Bear with me, you guys. I have a mess here. How's it going? Vero Videm. Mo Moshin Jill, how's it going? Glama 1946. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you for all the love and the uh, hearts and all the all the goodiness, all the good stuff. I love that. Thank you so much. Let's do this. I still got a little bit of Starbucks left. Yeah. Mm. Let's paint a let's paint a little picture here. Let's do a little painting. A little painting, a little, a little, little, little painting. All right, man. If you guys could see my palette, you guys would see the big mess I got. I got a huge mess. Look at those colors. Yeah. Muy messy. But you know what? That's how it's done. That's how I do it, anyways. Super messy, messy Jesse. All right, let's do this. So I'm gonna do a little ducky right here. Bam! There's a little ducky. Is that your phone? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. Just stand my thunder right here. So I'm gonna do a little ducky. The way I do the ducky is I just basically do something like that. Okay? Just basically do a little mini drawing. Okay, man, I'm good. Muy bueno. Okay, and then I do something like this, right? And then bam, there's my little ducky. Quack 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 quack. I think you guys need to watch this a little bit better because some of you are like, dude, what are you doing? I'm doing magic right here. That's what I'm doing. Doing all kinds of magic. And then from here, bam bam. Something like that. Okay? Simplicity is my religion if I ever attended any religion. I'm always looking for that, that, that edge in simplicity. I've talked about it in, in other little, you know, things, articles that I've written and things like that. How uh, it really I'm just looking for the, I'm looking for that edge. That will give me from uh, point A to point B. How can I take it from point A to point B in the simplest manner? And I'm not talking about simplicity in the sense of uh, how can it look more realistic or how can it look more abstract. Or no, I'm looking for 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 my my own genesis qua, right? And that's a. Uh, that's something that I believe you're gonna you're gonna find out on your own, right? You're gonna figure it out on your own. You gotta start figuring that out. Just little things that you're gonna start doing. You start figuring that out for yourself, right? For yourself. The more I paint, the more I realize how little I know about it, and how limited. It's really my my viewpoint of the whole thing. The more I do this, the more I realize that when I think I know so much, I'm not really, I'm really barely just scratching the surface of of any attempt of of knowledge, right? So I try to get away from the from the whole knowledge thing. Like I use it and then I throw it away, right? Use the knowledge thing, like you learn some rules and then you kind of throw them away and then you and then you go back to it and you learn something else and then you kind of have to throw it away again. I know it's, a, it's an interesting concept, it's like kind of weird, but it's the way I like to create artwork. I read that Picasso used to do something like this also, naturally do it. He started realizing that he was a... Uh, that he was having a hard time uh, 
learning stuff, not learning, uh, getting rid of, of, of knowledge, right? So every time he wanted to grow, he realized that he was being stuck in the same type of knowledge, the same stuff he was doing. So, so uh, he started realizing, no, dude, what I need to do is I need to learn and then, and then unlearn and then learn again and then unlearn and act as if I have no idea what I'm doing every single time. Uh, one of the philosophers used to say that that was his approach to starting, I don't know if it was Socrates, one of these guys. I think all of the philosophers that reached a, a high, high, uh, a deep understanding of things, I think they all, they all did that. I don't know what's the name of the philosopher, I don't, I don't remember the actual name of the philosopher who... Who, uh, who's famous for saying I, all I know is that I don't know or something like that I don't know if it was Socrates or one of those dudes but it's that point right it's that point where where you allow not to know right and and every time you you start a question every time you want an answer you start with not knowing right that's some deep that's some deep ish right here I'm sharing with you guys so that's how I started painting too. I started painting with not knowing. And, and I'm always looking for that edge. The edge of not knowing. This is how uh, philosophers come up with. Uh, and, and sages also. I've read about sages doing that. And they, they take a pause before opening their mouths. right? Before Because they're going to say something. The wise men, right? Before they say something of wisdom, they take a pause. They wait a little bit because they, they need to not know because otherwise how are they going to know they need to come from a place of not knowing if they already know everything then they're not really wise right they're just they're smart people but they're not wise wisdom wisdom and being smart is, is night and day it's completely different so I take that approach when I'm painting too I like to take that approach how can I start from a place where I don't know anything? How can I take a, 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 a how can I use that to my advantage, right? Not knowing. And and not knowing, it's really it's really allowing to not know, right? Like like I don't know what color goes there. Well, okay, okay, that's fine. Don't know what color goes there. It's it's cool. How can you move from from point A to point B without attempting to know? To try to figure out the answer. So that you can actually start doing something pure and real. Right? You can actually start painting something pure and real. Not great. Not realistic. Not the greatest thing in the world. No, like Van Gogh. Van Gogh, Van Gogh a lot of people don't, don't realize this. But Van Gogh was an excellent draftsman. Van Gogh knew how to paint in a, in a, in a very excellent realistic way. But he, he too was searching for that. I know because I, I, I read his you know, letters and... and, 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 and Many of you, I'm sure, have also studied the stuff that, 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 that he said and, and, and things that were recorded, right? He was looking for that edge. He was looking for that place where, where no judgment occurs, right? It's the non-judgment, right? It's also, uh, if you want to learn more about it, go out there and, and, and figure out uh, who's teaching non-duality you or who's uh or if you're if you're you know if you're religious go figure out the mystics you know go go check out some writings of the mystics um every religion has mystics as people that gone above they transcended above judgment and what i'm trying to share here with you guys is that we too can do that in artwork right we too can do that. We at, we at least can, if we can't do it in real in, in, in life, right? In in other experiences in our life, we can do it in our work, and at least that, right, gives a, a little taste of, of salvation, a little taste of, of reality, of something deeper, right? So that's how I approach it. Uh, I, I don't think about the color. I don't think much, right? The more and more, the more I realize that that I, the more I, I put my, myself in a place where I don't know, 
uh, the more something true comes out. I have no idea why this happens. I just know that it does. This is the same stuff that I've been that I've been barking since the beginning of my videos. The more the more you put in yourself in a place where you you don't know, like I don't I have no idea what color should go there. The truer your stuff is going to come out. I didn't I didn't make the rules, I just play by them. I have no idea why that happens. Uh, I have guesses, I can guess about it, but I any any real any guess would be a, a miserable attempt. Because it's something else, it's something deeper, it's something else, it's not. So even when it comes to, to brush, to like you have to learn it, learn whatever you need to learn, right? Because you're never gonna stop learning. Right? Learn whatever you need to learn and then and then let it go. Like like abandon it. Learn it and abandon it. Learn it and abandon it. The abandoning is the trust. That's really the trust. It's not that you it's not that you learn it like what's the point of learning if you're not gonna use it. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is learn it and then abandon it. Trust it, right? So learn how to use a certain brush stroke, right? Right? But then don't think about it anymore. It's okay if you do something else. It's okay if you, you know, it's okay if you're using this and you're using this and you're using this, right? And you're using this and you're playing with all of it, right? And then you get back to something else and, or it's okay if you just use one brush, you know, and then you abandon it. You let it go. You, you don't, you don't. You don't marry it, right? Because if you marry it, you want something out of it. And the whole point is that you want nothing out of it. You yourself want nothing out of it. And then it gives you that. It gives you the gift, right? And then it, 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 se, se, se te entrega in Spanish, you say that. Right? It comes, it, it, it gives itself to you. Álvarez, uh, Adriana, María, buenas tardes, ¿qué tal? Hello, <laughs> gracias, thank you for joining. So that's really the way I look at it, right? That's really the way I look at it. I, I try not to think of the colors. I try not to think of the shape. I try not to think, if I think, uh, then I start judging, right? I start judging myself. I start judging my work. So I try not to think about it. I let something else arise. Something else rise out of it. Something that if I couldn't think about it, it means it's good. If I couldn't think about it, it means that, that I, I've actually... <clears throat> I've touched something <clears throat> beyond my limited... My limited imagination and my limited uh, ideas. Now this is not to bash on my brain, which is extremely important and you know, we all have an intelligent, it's there, right? But it's a tool. See, it's, it's, it doesn't come from there. It doesn't come from the intelligence. The intelligence is a tool. Like the art doesn't come from this shit right here, right? This is just a tool. The art does not come from here the same way Art doesn't come from your brain. It doesn't come from your thinking process. Your thinking process is a tool. Art comes from something something deep, something way deeper than that, and, and larger and stronger and, and, and more creative than your brain. Right? The brain is just the it's just the, 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 the channel, right? It's just the channel, it's used, right? This this is just a, is a is a tool, it's just used, right? It's used. But the art does not come from here. It's like looking at the looking at the brush and saying, "Oh my God, what a beautiful artwork he's doing with that brush." Then you're not looking correctly, right? The hand you're doing the artwork with the hand, yes, but the artwork is, doesn't come from the hand either. The hand is a tool, right? So it's a connection, right? We think it's the color. That's why I tell people, don't be stuck on the color. Don't be stuck on the canvas. Don't be stuck on the color palette. Don't be stuck on none of that. Now use it, learn how to use it, but don't be stuck on that because, because you're going to start thinking that the art comes from there. You're going to start thinking that, that, who said this? I think the Buddha said, I think it was the Buddha, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, the finger pointing at the moon, right? It's not the moon, right? It's, it's, it's just because you're pointing at the moon doesn't mean that that's the moon, right? It's, it's just, it's an observation only. 
the 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 paint the brush the canvas this the palette right the hand me it's not the artwork it's just a conduit it's just a conduit the, your imagination your intelligence that is not where the artwork comes from it's just a conduit the artwork comes from somewhere else it's not even yours it's all of ours it's it belongs to all of us right it belongs to all of us uh, now, in a pragmatic way, of course, it comes it comes from you, right? Because from the individual, from a pragmatic standpoint. Uh, but but from a more esoteric, spiritual sense, it's it's not it's not where it comes from. It's not where it comes from. You just you're, you're just you're just a uh, you're an instrument, right? This is an instrument. Let me call the, let me change the word from tool to instrument. It sounds more romantic, and I think it makes more sense many times. Uh, it's like say the music, right? Someone plays the guitar and we think, oh, what a beautiful guitar, but give it to someone else. Oh, what happened to that beautiful sound that was coming from that guitar? No, it does not come from the guitar. It comes from the, from the musician, right? And, and even deeper, right? If you, if, you, if you search deeper, it doesn't even come from the musician. It doesn't come from the person. It comes from somewhere else. It's just that the musician acts as the guitar as well. It's just a deeper layer, right? The musician is also an instrument. The music does not come from him. So I, or her, that's why I tell you guys when, when you create artwork, uh, do it like this, uh, I think it's, uh, I think it was Socrates, if I'm not mistaken. He was either Plato or Socrates. But both of them could have said the same thing. It's just that the, 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 the saying is attributed to only one of them. But I believe that both of them, both of them probably, not probably, both of them thought the same way and, and carried themselves the same way if they're truly wise. Because these people were not just philosophers. They were wise people. They were, they were uh, it's experiential philosophers, a different type of philosopher. Not like today where we try to learn things. These people were actually unlearning things in order to reach a higher level of consciousness. But... These people come from a, from a point of not knowing, right? You ask them a question and they're like, I don't know, right? And, and that's a clean slate, right? Now they're going to use their, their instruments, their tools in order to answer the question, right? The things that they practice, the, the knowledge that they have acquired, now they can use it. But if they're like, oh yeah, I know everything. You ask them a question, they're going to start answering bullshit, right? Because... Because they're going to try to figure it out. Because the, the brain is limited. The brain is a storage. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not where the answer comes from. Same thing with the artwork. Right? You're going to paint something. The best, the, my advice is the best place to come from is from a non-knowing place. Even if you're a master painter, come from a non-knowing. From a non, it's a, it's a, it's a non-judgmental place. It's a pure state. Right? This is a childlike state. I don't know. Should I use this color? Should I not? Who cares? Let's use this. There is there is no yellow back here. It doesn't matter. You know? It doesn't matter. This does not mean that you're careless. This means that you allow. It's it's it, it starts helping you to to come to a place where you start allowing. It's in the allowing that the artwork actually comes from. It's in the in the when you when you drop the resistance, boom, the resistance drops, right? There's a resistance always, always trying to happen. Because the resistance, you start thinking, right? You're like, the feather didn't come out right. Okay, how can I get this feather right? And then we spend years trying to perfect the feather, trying to perfect the feather. You're not trying to perfect the feather until you're happy, right? Oh, the feather is so well painted, master artist. What you're really doing is you're, 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 you don't, you, most, most people don't know this. I, I don't think that most, most artists know this until they reach, they start reaching that point. But you're not really trying to paint the feather, right? What you're trying to do is drop the thought, drop the thought so you can accept the feather. If you accept the feather, it doesn't matter how you paint, you start becoming a master painter. You start accepting it. It, 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 that's, that's why that's why that's why Picasso could get away with stick figures because he accepted it. The rest of us couldn't accept it at the time, right? Whoever was living in, during that time, and still people don't accept it. But he accepted it, and that's what he was able to rise. Jackson Pollock accepted the drip painting, right? He accepted that, so he's able to rise. 
It's only in the non-judgment where you're able to rise. We're like butterflies. We constantly have to rise over our thoughts, over our judgment. So that's why I say, again, when you start creating artwork, accept where you are. Don't, uh, and even and better yet, right? Use what you know and start from a point of, I don't know. Right? I'm going to paint a, a duck. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I remember. I've seen a duck before. I know what it looks like. Maybe I'll use the reference photo. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll draw it. And on and on and on and on. It doesn't matter, but I'm not trying to mimic or match the duck. Even if it's a reference photo, even if it's a drawing, I'm just going to start from a point of, I don't know how to paint a duck. Okay, well, let's start from this corner, right? Let's start here. Let's start there. It doesn't really matter. Let's start from a messy, I didn't even clean my palette. Right? Let's start from a messy palette, right? Now, not everybody paints like this. I understand. But regardless of what you paint, try to practice that a little bit. It doesn't matter whether you paint realism or hyper-realism or, or expressionist abstraction or whatever, abstract expressionism, uh, da-da, whatever you do. It doesn't matter what you do. If you start coming from a place of not knowing, then something good starts coming out. Something good starts coming out because it's, it doesn't come from you. Don't kid yourself. The work doesn't come from you. It's it's it's... It's, uh, that's why people call it a gift, right? We were like, oh, you're gifted with art. I do believe, I used to reject that when people are like, no, you're, I'm not gifted. I actually practice a lot. Now I understand, no, it's everybody's gifted. It's just that you have to, you have to start peeling those, those, that resistance, peeling off the, the things that don't allow you to paint, right? And we do that with practice. We start practicing first certain little things, right? We start practicing how to mix paint, how to do this. We start learning some things, and then you start unlearning them. That's why, that's why Picasso was uh, Picasso was one of the people that actually recorded the process really well, right? It's like first I learn how to use how to draw like like Raphael, and then right, and then I have to, it takes me longer to draw like a child. He was talking about this state, the state of non-judgment. What does a child do? He'll draw, he'll draw a child. He, she, this little person will draw something, right? And they believe it's the highest, right? Because it is. It's the highest form of art. Until uh, someone else, a child that is now... Uh, because an adult would, would normally want to say something negative, right? But, but a child or, or, or an adult that behaves like a child, uh, more and more likely, hopefully not, but a child that is a little older has now has, has some experience with judgment, right? Will now start judging the, the, the drawing and say, that's not good enough. And then so the child starts getting that idea of, well, what is good and what is bad? And that's, that's why we have such a hard time creating artwork as adults. Because we were told what was good and what was bad often. Some, some other little a-holes start telling us, that's good, that's bad. And then, and then and adults that behave like... like like uh, like children that are not really like children, children, but like like <laughs> like teenagers, <laughs> to start telling us that's not good, that's not good, it's not good enough, it's not good enough. It can't be good enough because I don't feel good enough about myself, so it can't be good enough for you either. So so that's why I, I believe that painting is the practice of observation without judgment, and it's also the practice of acceptance. You start accepting yourself sooner or later. Uh, you will realize you're a master painter. You just, you know, you just have to start accepting wherever you are. I'll leave you guys with that. The name is Jose Trujillo. I'm the world's greatest living artist. It just happens to be that way. I call myself that. It just feels right. I don't know. <laughs> Take care, guys. This is a little duck I painted. I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon again and, and do another little demo. All right. Take care. Adios.